going live tonight. Can profits miss it? You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, and we're live tonight. I thought I'd do a live episode because, you know what, I'm really, really behind. Um, So I didn't have a podcast for tomorrow, and we're we're just doing this thing live. Anyway, I'm the author of the super-duper natural prophetic book, Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey. It's called Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey. It chronicles my experiences before and after my encounter with the Lord in 1995. Uh, before 1995, I talk a lot about demonic stuff, you know. And then, after I become born again, you can see what that scripture means when it says you must be born again to see the kingdom of heaven. And uh, so it talks about my journey from the New Age, Scientology, and all that. Well, I don't think I really talk about Scientology, but, you know, psychics, uh, astral projection, demons. <laughs> it talks about all that. And then how I went to the prophetic. And what's interesting is a lot of people that had these experiences as children it's basically a sign of a prophetic call. That's what I've noticed. I've been doing this for quite some time. And a lot of the children that have night terrors and their parents think that they're making it up or it's all in their head, um, you know, they might be on a prophetic journey. So think about that. A lot of people confide in me and they say, man, I've had that. I've had those night terrors. You know, they just call them nightmares, you know, but it's demonic attacks. A lot of people confide in me. I'm like, you know, when you can finally say the name of Jesus, you ever notice how it stops? Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. The demons have to flee, man. That's how it works. Now, my passion is for people to develop a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. You know, the Bible says that God is a spirit. And those that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. And I look at this from many different angles throughout my podcasts. What does that mean? What does it mean to be in the spirit? What does it mean to follow the spirit? And... I was musing, I guess it started with like a Facebook post. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I'm doing this live, so you're probably going to hear some typing. Um, I was doing this Facebook post, and someone started jumping all over the fact that prophets should hear from God, and there should be no question. Okay. Something about... Okay, I'm reading this book. It's a really good book, by the way. It's called Growing in the Prophetic with Mike Bickle. Mike Bickle's ministry was attacked, you know, a decade ago. And basically because of that, I was a little bit skeptical of getting in to anything that he did. And actually, I kind of wish that I'd, I'd have jumped on some of the stuff that he's doing. Like he has an international house of prayer, 24-hour Praise and Worship Center, and I'm reading this really good book, Growing in the Prophetic, and I posted an excerpt from that book. And you can see that there's just some misconceptions about the New Testament prophetic, the difference between the New and the Old. And and if you read my book, and this is not going to be one long commercial for my book, 
But you can see that I've had supernatural experiences in the demonic realm. And then after I get hit with a relationship with God, there's open visions. Um, angels, you see demons. Um, I've had trances, you know, kind of like when Peter had the uh, the sheet come down from heaven. And these are far and few between. And I've studied the prophetic, I've read books, I've had mentors. I learned what it means to prophesy in part. And I learned what it means to have mentors in the prophetic in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'm not saying that I've arrived. I continually feel like I don't know anything. Just being honest, I feel like I, I don't know anything. But when you're in this, and I, I try to stay talking about prophetic things mainly in this podcast, but it's really hard to operate in prophetic ministry because people expect you day in and day out to have some type of a vision, some type of a word for them, some type of a dream, interpret their dream, and you you just can't do it. Sometimes there's just not any more in me. And I remember in Houston, people would come up to me and say, give me a word. And I'm just like, man, I, I, can't, I can't keep this up. So here's a word. Repent. <laughs> That's awesome. Kevin Vesey's dad said that one day. I'm like, going, you know what? I'm going to remember that. If somebody wants a word, here's a word. Repent. So anyway, one of the knee-jerk things, and this is a this is a passage that everybody just goes to. It's a knee-jerk passage, and it's like if they've never read the Bible, it seems like they've read this passage, kind of like the Judge Not passage. You know, Judge Not, Matthew 7, 1, and they just kind of scribble out the whole rest of it. You know, use righteous judgment. You know, they just scribble out all that. But people automatically seem to go to Deuteronomy. And they quote this. And we're going to talk about can prophets miss it? But I'm going to read this passage. I bet you know it. Okay. It's Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet that spoke it has spoken it presumptuously, Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Konnichiwa. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire Japan and Dynamic Church Planning International, and you're listening to Coffee with Conrad. I've had a lot of supernatural experiences growing up. I searched for answers within the church and eventually to the New Age religions and paranormal sciences. During a time of desperation, I had an encounter with God. You can read about it in my book. Open your eyes, my supernatural journey. It chronicles my journey from the new age to walking in the prophetic with Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He opened my eyes. Jesus can open your eyes too. Open your eyes, my supernatural journey. Available on Amazon in both paperback and Kindle. Well, 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 well. I'll tell you what, tomorrow, Friday, on ConradRocks.net, I have an interview with uh, Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire Japan. And he's an American Christian missionary to Japan, and it's an awesome interview. He talks about what it's like to be a missionary, an American Christian missionary to Japan. And if you want to check out something cool, check out his blog. His blog is Holy Fire Japan. And you can see some of the peculiar stuff that they do. Like the, the the Japanese, they eat fried chicken for Christmas. Yeah, they do. Now, Steve's also helping out with the recent earthquake. He's kind of helping the people that did not get much government assistance. 
They fell through the cracks from the recent earthquake, earthquake tragedy there in April. T- tens of thousands of people were left homeless, and Steve is helping out with that. So you want to check that out. The interview is going to be out on uh, on Friday, so that'll be tomorrow. I'm doing this live now. Before the break here, I read I read Deuteronomy. You know the prophet that's wrong, kill him. <laughs> you know that prophet shall die. And that's the that's the scripture that everybody quotes. And how am I going to talk about this today? Can prophets miss it? And I'm going to give you a few examples, by the way. But this this passage, when people dogmatically stick to it, it kind of reminds me of how the devil, in Matthew four and Luke four, he mis he quotes the Bible and uses it against. Jesus. So when people quote this Old Testament passage, they use it as a blunt object, not a sword of the Spirit, but a blunt object against the New Testament prophetic that which Paul talks about, earnestly covet to prophesy. You prophesy in proportion to your faith. Um, When two or three are prophesying, let another judge. I mean, there's lots about the prophetic in the New Testament. So we have there's a disparity here between the old covenant, the way God dealt with the prophetic, and the New Testament prophetic. And I was speaking with Susan this morning. I'm like, oh man, you know, I just kind of wish they hadn't called it prophetic. You know, in John chapter 10 it says, "My sheep shall hear my voice, and they'll know me." Um, Acts chapter two it says, "I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and they're going to prophesy." You know, he's quoting uh, Acts 2, he's quoting Joel 2. I'm thinking, you know, people should see that there's a, there's a different way of handling the prophetic gifting, right? Um, so, but, but today, just to kind of throw a cog in this wheel, I just want to put something out here on the table, and let's just look at it, okay? And notice again, before I, before I get to that, Jesus had a great answer. When, when Satan said... Um, if you're the son of God, throw yourself off this building, for it is written, he, his angels shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Well, Jesus said it is written again. So we need to know the full counsel of God, right? And I think a lot of people get in error because they don't know the full counsel of God. And I'm not tuning my own horn. I'm trying to motivate us to learn more. In Hosea 4, 6, it says, My people who perish, for lack of knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And I'm going to read the rest of this verse so you get the seriousness of this. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thee thy children. I mean, that's how serious God takes learning his heavenly prescriptions, our way to live. Amen? Someone's talking to me in the chat room, Ed Dodds. Um, so let's, let's talk about something interesting here. Samuel didn't really know the voice of God. If you remember, he he had Eli coaching him. Eli didn't know the voice of God either. It turns out he was the high priest. He wasn't hearing from God. Remember how his sons, Hophni and Penaeus, I I think that was their name, they were in sin. And he's like, man, I just can't control my children. And uh, so anyway, Samuel's there. He's living with uh, with Eli. And here we go. The Lord called to Samuel. He said, Here am I. And he ran into Eli and said, Here I am, for thou called me. And he said, I called thee not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down, and the Lord called yet again. So see, notice here that Samuel, this prophet of God, he's probably just a small little child here, but he did not know the voice of the Lord. 
And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Yet the Lord called Samuel again to the third time. And he arose and went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. So Eli was catching on to something here. He's like, wait a minute, this kid has the prophetic gifting. I need to mentor him with the scriptural knowledge that I know. So Eli was actually drawing upon the Torah, you know, what, whatever information he had gleaned in his studies. And then he's like, okay, well, you need to go tell the Lord, speak for thy servant heareth. So it happened again, and then and then Samuel started talking. Now, I just wanted to point out that when Samuel first started hearing from God, he didn't know who it was. And this is an Old Testament dispensation, but I think we kind of run into that today. Sometimes God's telling us, like, the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. Amen? The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. And maybe they don't realize. They think, well, it's just my conscience. They, oh, that's just this. It's just, you know, they reject. They become seared to their conscience, and they reject it. They don't know it's God trying to get their attention. Now, here's another one. Nathan flat out missed it. I'm going to just tell you. Nathan, a prophet to David, missed it. Um, David wanted to build a house, right? In First Chronicles 17, 1 through 4, now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in a house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remains under curtains. Then Nathan said unto David, Do all that is in thy heart, for God is with thee. Now, do you see this? Nathan, in a very big scenario here, this is a big situation He's talking to the king. <laughs> and then he's talking about this huge thing that has to do with God. And Nathan just presumes. He didn't check. Uh, and he says, do, do what all is in your heart, for God's with thee. And it came to pass the same night the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell David my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. Now, another person that made a mistake similar to this, and I, I don't know if I can find it quickly, but it was Joshua and the Gibeonites. Remember, Joshua, um, I'm going to type here. The Gibeonites tricked Joshua in Joshua chapter 9, and he didn't consult the Lord. Remember, they, they had the moldy bread, the wine, they had the clothes all tattered, and they said, we come from a far country, right? And then he said, okay, I'll make a covenant with them. And it turns out he did not consult the Lord about a big thing. This was a big thing, right? Nathan did not consult the Lord about a big thing. And the Gibeonites, he, could, he God honored his word, and then long time later, if you'll remember, uh, King Saul killed the Gibeonites. And David had, there was a famine in the land for three years, right? And he asked the Lord, what's up? And he says, because King Saul had killed the Gibeonites. And then to make atonement for that, they had to hang the sons of Saul before the Lord to make atonement for the land. There was a curse on the land because Joshua did not think to consult the Lord over a thing that's really a big deal. He just believed the Gibeonites right off the bat. So I'm going to tell you, before you flippantly talk about something big, you need to get on your knees and ask God, or you could be someone that misses it, and it could bother you for centuries. Okay? Now, so there's Nathan. He missed it. And basically, then Nathan, uh, he said, Do what's all in your heart, for God's with thee. And it came to pass that night, the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. So looking back in hindsight, we can say, You know what? I really should have consulted God on this. 
If you remember another time somebody didn't consult God, uh, David, Satan stood up and tempted David to number Israel. He didn't consult the Lord. It's something he wanted to do, a huge endeavor that David just, you know, I want to know how many people i got in my army. That's what I want to know. And God did not bless that. And you'll notice David paid severely for not checking with the Lord over a big thing. This isn't buying a can of beans. This isn't, this isn't what type of shirt you're supposed to wear today. These are big things. So Jonah, a lot of people don't seem to think about this when they're quoting Deuteronomy, as I was talking earlier. If a prophet said something and it doesn't come to pass, that prophet's a false prophet is what they'll say. But let's look at, let's look at what Jonah did. Okay, you remember Jonah? God was trying to get him to go to Nineveh, and he ran the other way, and then the fish spit him out, and then he goes in to, to, to uh, Nineveh. And here's, here's the sermon. It's the shortest sermon in the whole Bible, I think. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. It's interesting. If you'll notice, Nineveh was not overthrown. They fasted and prayed and repented. Now, there's a lot of extra biblical stuff to this. Um, um, I believe extra biblically, the people of Nineveh believed in a a fish god. Was, could it be Dagon? Um, I'm going from memory here, and I could be wrong. But uh, when he was spit out by a fish, that got their attention, and they repented. So the spirit of what God was saying was this. Forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown, except thou repent. That was the spirit of it. God wanted to send a prophet to a heathen nation to give them a chance to repent. Jonah was tainting the prophetic word with his bent, his um, fleshly bent, right? And this happens today in the New Testament when the prophetic comes. We'll actually get something from the Lord and then we'll mess it up with our theology. We'll mess it up with our culture, okay? And Jonah here messed it up by not saying, except thou repent, because he did not want them to repent, remember? So, that was a problem there. Oh, people are talking in the chat room. Amen. Dagon, Ed Dodds, thank you. You rock. Um, now, let's talk about Micaiah. I don't know if you guys are going to know this one, but if you check out 1 Kings, I'm going to go there. 1 Kings chapter 22. This is a really good chapter. Um... And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. Now, notice this is the king of Israel, right? The king of Israel said to his servants, No, you, Ramoth, and Gilead, as ours will be still and take it out of the land of the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to the battle of Ramoth, Gilead? Jehoshaphat said to the king, I am as thou art. My people is thy people. My horses is thy horses. Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord. Now this is the Lord all caps. L-O-R-D, which means Jehovah, right? When they do that, it's Jehovah. So then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said, Shall I go? Now notice they all said, Go up, right? And then Jehoshaphat smells a rat. (laughs) It's really funny because he does. He smells something wrong. And he says in verse 7, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel says to Jehoshaphat, Yeah, there's one. His name's Micaiah, um, by whom we may inquire of Jehovah. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. So then, coming down, the king of Israel called an officer. He said, hasten, get Micaiah over here. And 
that Zedekiah, the son of Chaniah, made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, with these shalt they push the Syrians until they have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied, saying, Go up, right? And the messenger was to call Micah. He said, Okay, now, behold, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micah says this, As the Lord lives, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said to Micaiah, Shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? Now listen to this. This is the point I want you to get. He answers the king, and he says, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Micaiah agreed with the other 400 prophets. He lied. We're going to find out that he lied. Okay, And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? So Micaiah probably said this in a sarcastic way. I can imagine him just going up and going, Yeah, go up and you'll you'll be awesome and just, just really sarcastically doing it. And then Micaiah starts telling them the truth. Now, I'm going to tell you something else here. We can learn a lot from this because in the next few verses here, I saw Israel upon the hills as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return everyone to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? And he said, Hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. The Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up to fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said this manner, and the other said that manner. And therefore it came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Now here's how he's going to do it, okay? Check this out. Now these are prophets of the king of Israel. They're prophesying in the name of Jehovah, right? Okay, is that sinking in? And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put, who? Jehovah, hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. So I want you to understand, what what do we learn here? Uh, There can be a lying prophet, I mean, a lying spirit in the mouths of the prophets sent by God. Now, how does that work with your Deuteronomy? You're going to have to learn the full counsel of God. Okay? Um, Here's another passage that you might not know. And this prophets can miss it, man. Check it out. This is in Ezekiel. It's a crazy, crazy passage here. And welcome everyone in the chat room. You guys rock. I want to give a shout out to uh, the people in the chat room. Chipmunk Zombies Revenge. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. And Ed Dodds, you guys rock. Um, there you go. Okay. Now, I'm going to be talking about Ezekiel 14.9. Uh, and if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing... I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. And the punishment of that of the prophet shall be as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. Now, I'm just going to tell you, man, we need to kind of like trim, work out our salvation with, with trembling and fear. I mean... God can deceive prophets. It's in the Bible. I've provided the scriptural passages for you. You know? So when we're quoting Deuteronomy, um, we need to be humble. When we quote that passage, we need to we need to seek the full counsel of God. There are and I, I went and used mainly, I guess, all Old Testament prophets. Okay. Let's see, what else did I want to say? I mean, I've gone 30 minutes, I guess, so I'm going to go ahead and end this. Tomorrow, I want you guys to check out my interview with Stephen Barrett from HolyFireJapan.com and Dynamic Church Planting 
International. That's DP, DCPI.org. He's a, an American Christian missionary in Chu, Japan, right? And he's helping out with the recent earthquake. There's tens of thousands of people homeless, and you guys that are supporting him. He also shows pictures of what he does on his Facebook page uh, and also his blog. Amen. And for Chip Zunk Monkey's Revenge, um, yes, if you check out my book, Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey, or if you play replay the beginning of this podcast, you'll see that I talk about that. You came in a little bit. He's asked me if I ever have been given a vision or heard from the Lord. So go back and just replay the podcast. God bless you guys. I want to thank you for being in my life. Remember to share this with your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, email, smoke signals, however you do it, just share it. And uh, also there's a support page at conradrocks.net. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net. You can also follow me on Snapchat. Snapchat on Prophetic Pearls. That's Prophetic Pearls on Snapchat. been listening to coffee with conrad at conradrocks.net my blog is conradrocks.net check it out it's all about jesus